Okay students, this is the next video for your lesson on excretion and this video will be on urine formation. Okay, uh, as mentioned previously in the previous video, in the kidney itself there are millions of nephrons. Okay, and today we shall look at one individual nephron in the kidney and how and how it actually helps in urine formation. Now before we even talk about the urine formation, we shall talk about the different structures of the nephron first. Okay, so at the right at the beginning, when uh, the arteries enter the nephrons itself, the first structure that they will encounter is this particular structure called the Bowman's capsule. So this particular structure is called the Bowman's capsule. Moving on from the Bowman's capsule is this particular structure here. This whole region here will be called the proximal convoluted tubule. Okay, after the proximal convoluted tubule, it will loop into this particular loop, which is called the loop of Henle. Then it will move upwards to this particular structure here that looks very similar to the proximal, proximal convoluted tubule and this will be the distal convoluted tubule. And finally, it leads into this particular structure here which is the collecting duct. And this is the place where the urine will be collected and being sent to the renal pelvis. Okay, so these are the main structures that you need to remember of a tubule. Okay, no, so, sorry, not tubule. Uh, the main structures of a nephron. So um, we shall t then look into the two processes that forms your urine formation. The very first process basically will be called ultrafiltration. So where is ultrafiltration being for a uh, um, taking place, basically ultrafiltration will take place at the Bowman's capsule. Now blood will enter the kidneys via the renal artery. Once it enters the kidneys, the renal artery will then branch off into various blood arterioles and one of the arterioles will then enter the Bowman's capsule. Okay, And the name of the arterial that enters the Bowman's capsule is called the afferent arterial with the A. Then it enters the Bowman's capsule, it's actually further split into a whole branch uh, network of capillaries and these capillaries are called the glomerulus. So this section is called the glomerulus. Okay, then of course these capillaries will then branch together again to give you the efferent arterial with an E which will then move towards and start to coil itself around the whole nephron. Okay, eventually they will merge together again to leave the nephron via a venule and these venules will eventually form your renal vein that will bring the blood away from the kidneys. Okay, so exactly what happens here? Um, first stage of course of urine formation is your uh, ultrafiltration. So ultrafiltration occurs at this section here. So what happens during ultrafiltration? Now, due to the difference in the diameter of the two arterioles, the efferent arteriole, the one where it brings the blood into the Bowman's capsule, have a larger diameter compared to the efferent arteriole, the one that leaves the Bowman's capsule. Due to the difference in the diameter, there is a very high blood pressure being formed at the glomerulus. Now, due to this very high blood pressure formed by the glomerulus, small substances will be forced out into the Bowman's capsule. And these substances will include your water, will include your glucose, that is in the blood. It also includes the amino acids, mineral salts, and most importantly, your nitrogenous waste products. 
which you want to remove from your blood. Okay, eventually all these will form the filtrate. And this filtrate will then flow downwards within the nephron itself. Okay, then what about the different uh, substances like for example your red blood cells, your white blood cells, the platelets and the proteins? Because these substances are too big, they will not be forced out of the glomerulus itself. So they remain in the bloodstream, which eventually will flow within the arterioles that is surrounding the nephron. Okay, so this is ultrafiltration. Now, the next section will be called selective reabsorption. So selective reabsorption will take place at the rest of the nephrons, the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal convoluted tubule, and the collecting duct. So the next process, which is selective reabsorption, will occur at the remaining parts of the nephron. Okay, will take place here, take place here, and here. And of course, at the collecting duct as well for selective reabsorption. Okay, so what happens during selective reabsorption? As you can see from the name itself, is a reabsorption of basically the substances that are useful to the blood or that are useful to the person. So you want these substances to, be, to reabsorb back into the bloodstream. So what are being reabsorbed back? We shall begin first at the proximal convoluted tubule. At the proximal convoluted tubule, water, all the glucose, amino acids, most of the mineral salts will be reabsorbed back into the bloodstream. So all this is being reabsorbed back into the bloodstream at the proximal convoluted, uh, proximal convoluted tubule. Okay, so at this section here, most of the useful substances uh, that is useful for the blood will be reabsorbed at this section here. And of course, the filtrate will continue to move along the nephron itself to the loop of Henle. So at the loop of Henle, what is being reabsorbed back? Basically water, whatever remaining water that you need is actually being reabsorbed back. So some water are being reabsorbed back here. As the filtrate moves towards the distal convoluted tubule, more reabsorption will take place here if needed. And what is being reabsorbed here? Water and mineral salts. Is being reabsorbed here. Finally, the filtrate will move towards the collecting duct and eventually it will flow within the collecting duct to go to the renal pelvis. And at the collecting duct, final reabsorption of water if needed is also uh, taking place here if water needs to be reabsorbed back into the bloodstream. Okay, so whatever remaining in this collecting duct will be your excess water that you do not need in uh, the bloodstream. Uh, you also have your nitrogenous waste products that you want to remove from your blood. For example, your urea, your creatinine, your uric acid. So these particular fluid here, your excess water plus your nitrogenous waste products will eventually form your urine. Okay, so this is how your urine is being formed. Now at the, uh, for both, not for both, for all the selective reabsorption that occurs within the nephron itself, it's actually due to the um, same processes of the movement of substances. For example, diffusion, and you have your osmosis, and you have your active transport. Depending on what substances are being reabsorbed back. And because they are very selective, therefore all the things that the blood needs, it will absorb back. Um, the, the, 
um, things that the blood do not need, for example, the excess water and nitrogenous waste products will be eventually passed on to the collecting duct, which will then move on to the renal pelvis and then of course to the bladder to be removed from the body. Okay, so basically, uh, just a little summary, this is the structure of the nephron. Two processes for ultrafiltration. The first process, no, two processes of urine formation, sorry. So the first process is your ultrafiltration. Okay, while well the next process will be your selective reabsorption. And of course, what is being uh, removed during ultrafiltration will be these substances due to the high blood pressure that is being formed at the glomerulus and what is being reabsorbed back will be your useful substances for example your glucose, your amino acids, your mineral salts and some water. Whatever that is not needed by the body eventually will be removed uh, by the collecting duct and these will be the one that forms your urine. So this is the whole process for urine formation.